this week, organic dairy farmer Ian Pye from in Lancashire has sent us a little vid about just what the state of dairy farming is in the UK. Thanks a lot, Ian. Hi, uh, I'm Ian Pye at Old Holly Farm, and thank you for um, the Real Country File just asking me what I'm thinking about the dairy industry going forward. Um, in the short term, I, I think farmers could just be in for a rocky ride. I think the cost of living crisis is going to get put back into a cost of farming crisis, uh, where we've got high input costs that are still in the barn, uh, products that we've bought to use, and they are... Um, going to be used now like you know we're seeding now um, and there will be some expensive inputs uh, and yet the consumers want food price cuts now so the prices are dropping uh, I think we could be in for a turbulent six months um, but it uh, going all depends on the weather you know if we have a kind spring and there's lots of milk around then we could be in some trouble um, globally there seems to still be drought so at least <laughs> the good thing about this country is we've always got water um, and then more close to home on the farm, um, all the products are going out on the fields, all the nutrients have been applied. Um, we're sowing spring crops into some actually really good seed beds. Soil's held up really well over winter and um, cows will probably be about three weeks off going out, hopefully. I know cows locally are going out, uh, those that haven't had sheep on. Um, but uh, yeah, if spring's kind, then cows will be out. All right, keep well, see you later. Big thank you to Ian Pye for sending us his video in this week to The Real Country File. Don't forget, we want you to send what your opinion is. What's going on on your farm? What would you like to tell other farmers about? What would you like to get off your chest? What's really winding you up this week? You can send your videos. If you can send them in portrait to us, to vids, vids at therealcountryfile.co.uk. We'd love to get you on and get your voice heard across the country. A few weeks ago, I did a question time debate at Harper Adams University with Farmers Weekly, and I believe it is now live on the Farmers Weekly's YouTube channel themselves about it. So we had Mark Spencer, the, the MP for DEFRA, the guy from the college, and another lady whose name I've already I've forgotten already, so I'm sorry. Um, but anyway, Andrew's been there this week, so let's go and see what she's got up to. today at the Midlands Agri-Tech Innovation Hub and at this, um, this amazing site um, they've got a, a networking uh, breakfast meeting so that people that have um, new ideas about Agri-Tech businesses that they want to start up can collaborate together and get support. So let's go and have a chat to some of the people that are here today. So I'm here now with Jose Chitty, who works for the company of Smart Bell. So Jose, tell us about your product and what it is that you do. Oh, thank you. So uh, I'm one of the founders of Smart Bell, and what we've developed is an ear tag that does early detection of scours and pneumonias and other health issues that affect calves. Okay. Um, so and, that, and that's it. And yeah, this is it. It's quite a neat little uh, thing then, really. Yeah, so we developed it to be small enough and light enough to be able to be tagged on a calf at birth. Okay. And the way it works is it'll collect both the temperature every five minutes as well as the profile of activity throughout the day, store it locally, and all the farm needs to do is have a, one of our receiver stations in a shed, and when the calf is close enough to the receiver station, it'll download all that information. So we analyze that to see changes of behavior, like it might be less active, or it might be lying down more, or might get a drop in temperature or a peak in temperature. And in the app at six in the morning, the farm will get a list of animals that have uh, high anomalies. Ideally, we're looking for early alerts that could be one or two days before clinical symptoms. And what we've seen in some farms is that this has allowed them to go in with an anti-inflammatory and then recover those calves before they get sick enough to need a full antibiotic treatment. So, so how has the centre here helped you? So uh, Agri Epicentre has been uh, quite instrumental in the development of the tag. So we've partnered with uh, Parkland Veterinary Group, uh, Agri Epicentre and SIUC and they helped us do the initial testing of the tag, the validation through uh, multiple farms of different types, both beef and dairy farms, 
and now they're helping us through uh, the commercialization of the product and helping find partners to get the tags into market. Right, just so that you can launch it on the, the market so farmers can actually go and, and buy it. Exactly, and, have uh, access to it. Yeah, absolutely, get using it, right. Look out for this product in future. I think it's going to be an amazing thing on a lot of dairy farms locally. And the next person that I've come across to have a chat with is Lisa Morgans from Innovation for Agriculture. And Lisa, you've got an event that you want to tell everybody yeah, about, haven't yeah. you? So give us all the details. Okay, yeah, so an exciting event that we're putting on, first in um, this kind of style, and it's based on the Royal Agricultural Society of England's Farm of the Future reports that came out last year, which is sort of paving this way for how farms can decarbonize, look after soil, build in technology and support into our systems um, that can you know, reach the goal of net zero that we've all been tasked with in the industry. Um, so using those reports, we thought, well, now we want to get them out to the farming community, um, bring farmers together to understand what other sectors are doing, but also to learn about the latest research and technology and how that can help. So on Thursday, the 13th of April, uh, here at Harper Adams, we are holding um, our first event for Farm of the Future, and it's called Farm of the Future, Net Zero in Practice. And is it free for people to come along to? Free for people to come along to. It's charitably funded, um, and ourselves, Innovation for Agriculture, is sort of coordinating the event um, in partnership with Harper Adams. And we've got three different um, kind of technical sessions within the day. Um, one about focusing on decarbonisation in livestock production. Uh, and then we've got another um, technical session that's focused on hands-free farm here at Harper. And then the third technical session is all about bio waste and circular systems, making more of um, the nutrients on farm um, and future fuels and energy and how that can help farm systems right. decarbonise. So, so a really sort of forward looking yeah. um, activities and yeah. something that is very educational and could save a lot of money yep. on farms in future in that case. Exactly. So very good. Right. So we'll put all that information on the video description and uh, come along if that's something that you're interested in. I'm here now with uh, David from Agri Enable. So, David, have you been to this kind of event before? Yeah, I have. This is my second time. It's great to be in a room with like minded business professionals. We're all here to talk about the one agenda that unites us all, which is food security and everything food and farming. There's a lot of really good stuff going on. Now, I've been looking at a piece of equipment in this room. I'm not quite sure what it was. So, I've asked Dr. Trish to uh, give us a bit of an overview. So what does it actually do, this machine? So this is one of our sensor uh, deployment platforms. Um, so basically it's a robot um, that we can drive through a field with whichever sensor we want um, to put on it. So it can do um, very fine um, vision um, images of plants or we can put a scoop or an arm on it so it can actually do something. It can drag other equipment along. Brilliant. So, so if somebody's got an idea and they've got sensors that they want to test out, they can just hire this uh, to put the sensors in and, uh, and see if their idea works. Yeah, and actually if they don't have the sensors themselves and they say, well, actually I've got an idea and I really just want to do this, um, just come and have a chat with us. If you don't have it, we probably do, or we know somewhere we can get that for you. Um, so actually, if anybody's got sort of a really good idea, um, they're not in the ag tech sector at the moment, but they'd like to explore that, come and have a chat with us at the Agri Open Centre, and, and we've got the technology that can help enable you to accelerate your transition um, in tech. So, Tom, you've been involved in organising today's event, so how's it gone from your point of view? It's been an incredible success. Once again, we've had a huge turnout of people here um, looking to find out more about innovations happening in agricultural technology, both across the country, but also more importantly in this Midlands region. The, the, the main role for every epicentre across the country and internationally is to work to bring farmers and technologists and innovators together. So if you're a technologist or an innovator that's got an exciting idea that you think could work to help improve 
productivity and sustainability on farms, then we're here to help put you in contact and help that get that idea through. If you're a farmer, on the other hand, who's got a problem that you found on farm, but you can see that there's potential for an innovative technology solution for, then again, come to us and we can help see if we can partner you with the right people to see to bring that idea to fruition. Thanks very much for that. If you have got any videos that you want to send us out or you want to be featured, get in touch with us or you want some topics covering, let us know. Anyway, if you've made it this far, it'd be great if you could like and subscribe. It really helps with the channel. Actually, sorry, one last thing. Just must congratulate Stretton Young Farmers. They had a successful tractor run this week with over 100 tractors and raised over £4,000, which is amazing. So well done to them. And well done to everyone that donated as well. Anyway, that is actually it for this week. I'll see you next week.